In 1922, in the small country of Sweden, the world's first government institute of race biology is established. Twelve years later, a unanimous parliament passes a sterilization law. The Institute of Race Biology in Uppsala, under its founder Hermann Lundborg, is the center of Swedish race research. In the course of endless travel, material is gathered. Photographs and physical measurements of thousands of Swedes. In the pursuit of positive and negative heritage, towns and parishes, prisons and correctional institutions are visited. In Germany, the Swedish efforts arouse admiration. The Institute of Race Biology in Uppsala, writes the journal Dysona, will rouse Germany's dawning race research to life. Beyond the purely scientific motives, the Swedes are committed to the pride and welfare of their Nordic blood, and like us, to the Nordic idea which once again, and for even more profound reasons, strengthens the ties that bind Sweden and Germany. The Institute places peculiar emphasis on anthropological measurements and ethnic attributes. Despite this, race hygiene would be integrated into Swedish social policy. During the 1920s and 30s, Sweden becomes a progressive welfare state in which ethnic conflict is virtually unknown. A passion for social justice, preserving the physical and mental health of the Swedish stock, is the rallying cry. Race hygiene is seen as central to the well-being of modern society. In Sweden, race hygiene theories merge with the vision of the welfare state. Social engineers are responsible for organizing society for the greater good. The nation ranks higher than the individual. The Swedish stock must be protected from inferior and foreign elements, fortified to meet the growing demands of modern society. Individuals with inferior traits must be prevented from procreating. Positive eugenics, breeding, is still a dream. Thus, negative eugenics must be accepted. The sterilization law is not compulsory. The Swedish variety is democratic. Opposition shall be overcome through persuasion. 